Okay, who wants to start with the check-in then? Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm Lucia. And my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm South European, so I have like black long hair, uh, white skin, and green eyes. And today I feel so happy to have arrived here and really feel with them right now, even though that I'm not here physically. Hi, I'm Patty. I use the pronouns of she, her. I have brown and blonde hair. I have brown eyes. And I'm so happy to be here but I'm so nervous too. I am Maria, uh, I use she, her pronouns. I am a white skinned person, South Mediterranean, brown eyes, long hair. I am wearing a rosa jacket and a long black skirt. And today I'm feeling focused, but uh, a little bit nervous uh, because I couldn't sleep very well yesterday. My name is Anna and my pronouns are she, her. I am a white woman with long blonde hair and I have bright eyes. Uh, I'm wearing a pink suit and I feel happy and er energetic today, but I didn't sleep really well because I had nightmares. So I also feel a little bit nervous. Uh, my name is Lorenzo. Uh, I use all pronouns. I am a white person and I'm tall and I'm wearing uh, all white and black clothes. Today I feel very happy of being here, but at the same time I'm a little concerned and nervous. My name is Fernando, my pronouns are he, him. I'm from Peru, I'm wearing glasses, uh, and my hair today is pink, and I couldn't rest uh, last night because I overslept reading the news from my country. So, do you think that we have actually done an access rider for this landscape? Maybe it's important to know what, what an access rider is. Okay, an access rider is a document that ensures the accessibility and the communication between a person with uh, disabilities and usually an institution. Well, I would say not only disabilities, but uh, people with disabilities, visible and invisible, with chronic health conditions and with um, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. One thing that in the beginning I didn't understand, it, and it was the access needs budget. And also saying, if you cannot do all these things, it's not that I'm not going to work with you. Just say that you cannot provide these things and let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like... Accessibility is also acknowledging that you cannot provide some accessibility things. Now, the access rider has been created for humans, and then we decided to push it even further. Mm -hmm. Think about what it is to make an access rider for a landscape and try to approach its needs. I think there's a problem in the representation of an access rider. Since we are humans and we have an unappellable human voice, we cannot actually know really the necessities or the... We do, it's not just that we cannot know the necessities, but we don't speak the same language. And how do we even ask the park yeah. if it needs an access rider? And if we ask, how do we hear the answer? Like, do we hear the answer or do we just, um, you know, meditate on the answer? Maybe we can do a, a break? Yeah. <laughs> I need to go to the toilet. is a, a space designed to represent a certain nature 
Uh, that's what we were saying a lot about the parrots mm -hmm. and also about la, the plate of la veneno. And how does these events um, change the way in which we do perceive the park and how is illness being instrumentalized in order to create this idea of sickness and not accepting these bodies because they were not initially on the plants. So sickness turns into a, um, a way of rejecting them. Because, for example, the parrots are, of course, a problem in which they were brought here as trophies and as um, exotic. Yeah, exotic images of the tropics. And now that they have found this space in where they are happy, they suddenly are a problem <clears throat> to the protection of these imaginaries. Did we have a rereading or rewriting of the park when we were visiting it? We were focusing on these fragilities of the park, and when we were there, could you um, could you feel that? Uh, of course, it was a beautiful day, and the first thought was, "Wow, this is a great park <laughs> where we can, uh, you know, spend some time with friends or whatever." It's a park for the pleasure, in some way. Right? This, uh, this became an illusion. When we look very close at the river, we see this as like a prosthesis river. This is a fake river. I think it's like a construction, right? Like, like fiction. It's a good fiction to be there. We have yet to learn also what an access writer can do. Because for me, is that um, We've been practicing this idea of representation about what are the meanings of this space by doing all these echoes. Um, maybe it's important for the access writer to think about uh, uh, an exercise of a speculation. We can only think about, dream about, uh, imagine about. Tengo una duda sobre si realmente hemos interactuado suficiente con el parque. Siento que es, o sea, que lo hemos entendido, uh -huh. lo hemos procesado. Eh, no lo sé, es como también una sensación. Hmm. Yeah. I think a, an access writer is the base in order to create a relation. It's more getting to know and access. Uh, an access writer is a document to facilitate communication. That's the, that's the basis of what it is. I think we've done this basis. Uh -huh. I... I would like to think that this is a kind of care process. We open this sensibility, this empathy with the power you were saying to it. Sometimes accessibility or caring is just a company, it's just understanding, it's just... It's a, it's a practice. It's more about realizing what is there and taking account those agencies more than being with. Being with is the part after the communication started. This is the purpose of, a, of an access rider. So, I mean, the document is a step in between. An access rider is a kind of dynamic. It's changing. So it's, it's never done. That's it. Let's go. Uh, what turn. about turning off the light? Yeah. <gasps> Look, yeah. I like it because I've, as a migrant person, I like dark places. <laughs> <laughs> Okay.